Today we are going to draw a character turnaround. Right here I have my book. Uh, some sketches I've done, some writings. Some images from my comic book. Um, Pretty much like in what I see already. So hmm. let's see what character should we start doing? Maybe we'll do Jenna. This is the original cover. Comic book. Please Diana and the rest of my uh, it's Jenna, you know, if you look at the book, you might think it's Parker, it's not. It's Jenna Day. Uh, she's a little different than what I have originally thought of her. So he's changing her hair a lot. And, uh... And this is, like, an original... What she should probably look like. So that's a little more anime, a little more manga. So the difference is it's pretty much there. Alright. So let's use the manga. I'm sorry. Let's use the, the anime as our reference. So I'll start with a blank sheet of paper. If you don't know how to use a pegboard, it's a pegboard. I can punch paper. Slap right now. Alright, so let's get started. Now what I usually like to do is I'll keep my reference picture someplace on the side somewhere. Maybe right in front of me, maybe on the side. So, so I know what the character looks like. So when I start drawing, I have not much guesswork in it. Alright, so you want to be loose when you start drawing anytime. Just, you know, get loose. Don't grab your pencil like this and squeeze the life out of it. You want to keep your hand loose somewhere in the middle of the pencil so when you have the flat part of your palm down, you know, it just glides along the paper. So what I like to do is I like to start flooding around my hand, just as an exercise, feeling the circles get loose. And when I'm feeling it, you know, even if the paper just feels a little rough, you can either flip it over, or you could uh, you know, grab a different piece of paper if you're not feeling it. I don't know. So. Get your circuits going. I like to start with the head of the character. And if you think you're moving around your paper too much, an old rubber band or a new rubber band would work. Stick it on your paper. Now, unless that breaks, your paper is really not going to go anywhere. So let's start with our head. Heads usually for me they're round and I like to bring down the face since her face comes to like a point. I just like to sketch it out. Not pressing hard at all. Hopefully you can see my sketching on the paper. Sorry if it's a little light. I come back and finish and start inking. You'll see it a lot better, I'm sorry. So you have your head shape. Uh, Jen is a little, she's a little cocky, so her head would be tilted up a little bit. Now this crosshair, 
this is for uh, which way she's looking. She's looking left. And you'll draw your line so it's going right. She's looking to the right. You'll put it in the opposite direction. So it's basically this versus that. So this one she's looking that way. This one she's looking that way. Same thing for if she's looking up. Or if she's looking down. So keep it in mind when you're drawing, depending which is looking, you're going to be drawing the opposite. Alright, so we have our head shape. Start drawing in the neck. And for me, everything's shapes. I think for most artists who are serious about the anatomy or any object to drawing, it's always about shapes. Circles, you know, curves, cylinders. And we'll draw our, our chest. shoulders. Now her neck right now might be a little bit down. Depending on which way her head is tilted. So her head is doing this to the shape. So when you're drawing in her collarbone, the rest of her shoulders. It'll be in that shape. And her waist is a bigger cylinder. Her pelvic bone will be a V. And she has bull joints to start her leg. Now I'll start drawing on her breasts. And she's kind of top heavy in comparison to Parker. Her abs. Her ribcage, I'm sorry. Her hips. hips are following the pump button. So those hips there. The hips are here. So for animation, I like to keep one side flat much as possible and one side curved to give the illusion of muscle. So outside can be curved, so inside can be flat or vice versa. So this is more flat and this side is more curved. Inside of her thigh is flat has its curves when it's countering this curve. We'll draw her arms, which are also cylinders. Remember, the elbow will always go in the 
in circular motion around the head and always be at the hip. So you can always find where your elbow should be unless you join some freaky looking person. That's roughly her hip. That's where her elbow will be on any given place of your circle. Same thing goes for her hand, tip of her fingers. They'll fall about bottom of the thigh, but everyone's different. There's no real rules. If you're drawing an anatomy, you want to have some sort of foundation of reality. Usually I would never do pencils this tight. It's just for the sake of the video so you could see what I'm doing. These animation pencils are very light blue. So her hand. Let me keep shape. See cylinders rectangle, circles, cylinders. Those are the shapes you need when you join anatomy. Now the cylinders can curve, but the circle is always a circle. If you change it, it'll become an oval. Which is logic, but it has some The hand is a rectangle or square, depending on how you like to draw your hands. Make it 3D. Then you could add in kind of circular edged triangle. Or one fourth of a circle. And your thumb. Or flat. circular. And what I like to do is draw circles for where the knuckle to be on the hand. Just draw your fingers. It's just a rough sketch. Her hand might be a little bit big. But Jenna has some, <laughs> some nice hands. Such a shape. Got this going on. Got contour shapes inside the neck. Got this shape going on for her hips and her legs. Got these S curves going. All this. Coming down, making her sexy. Girl, is she standing like. like she's some sort of a. Uh, zombie or something. <laughs> Alright, now we have that phase done. We'll go in and we'll tighten her, put some clothes on her, give her a face and some hair, and accessories. So, Jenna has this long nose. Start to nose. Kind of in her T right here. Start it from there. Comes to a point. Curves in. She has a little bitty mouth. A little pouty mouth. It's a pouty, not potty. And nose shape will lead you to where the eyebrow would go. And in anime, their eyes are usually circular or oval. For Janet's, they're kind of circular, kind of big. And the size of them are usually really far apart.
And so Jenna's eyes are like this. They're half circle, dark, flattened out, there's lots and lots of little eyelashes. She has a line over her eyes, which her eyeball would be. Bottom, another line, some more eyelashes. It's very feminine, very deep looking. Same thing goes on the other side. Lots of squiggles, her eyelashes. No line for the top of her eyeball. It's hidden underneath her eyelid. Dark circles. Some eyelashes on the end. Her eye is what I call a Pac Man looking eye, which would be something like this. You have a little Pac-Man going on right here. And then there'll be a light source. Which is that white piece of the eye. And then her iris, just the black part, would be here. Almost. Depending where she's looking. She could look anywhere. And her eyeball move. And there's more light on the bottom. And then it curves around. And then there's little special shades going on, lines, to make her eye more interesting looking. Darker parts. lighter parts. Probably keep the eyeball interesting looking. Something this size you really can't do that much detail. Maybe that Pac-Man might be a little bit too big for her eye. Especially at this size. So we'll just try to do as much as we can. But I like to make her eye ball real big. It's cute. So she'll just be looking a little bit off that way. That way. And those are her eyes. You could put in the detail later, but now you want to focus more on the rest of her. So her ear will go somewhere. It'll measure somewhere around here, which would be like the center of her eyeball would be the top. And the bottom of her nose would be the bottom of her ear. Because she is looking that way. And I like to also draw the other ear just so I know what the proportions are when I start putting in all the other details like hair and stuff. Now a hairline, which has a weird hairline, but it will start in the middle and I'll bring it down. From the middle, I'll bring it down. This is a this hair cell she will have but it'll give me a guideline of where her hair should fall, especially since the eyeball will eventually be covered up with her hair. So now, she has a weird haircut. It's two different haircuts in one, at least with the anime style that I've originally drawn for her. So half of it's black, kind of straight, the other half is pink, kind of wavy and curly. It has these little uh, pigtail going on. So 
so he's still using the picture as a reference. I'll just start with her hair a little bit over her skull. She has a giant, like eight, like a giant forehead. So I'll just start from the top and just bring it down, try to keep the shape of her hair. And since her hair starts coming down, I'm making a shape. It just comes falling and falling and falling until it gets over by her nose. It falls all the way down. She has little spikes that come out. There's about three of them. And then her eyeball gets totally covered up. Her hair does this wavy part. It connects. The rest of it comes down. Around her eye. It just falls down. Has this giant pigtail. You could just get loose of it. It's held together somehow. It's all about the contour shapes. So now I'll go start drawing on her face shape of her face. Just keeping the traditional anime style. I like to keep it a little pointy. Just a little curvy. And her chin doesn't connect. I don't know, that's just the way I originally drew her in Photoshop and on my computer. So she's getting there. Doesn't look really like much since she's not colored and everything. So now I'll start putting on clothes for her using the same style of clothing she had in the picture. For her neck. She has this long, beautiful neck. Strong shoulders. And one shoulder, her shirt's hanging off of her. So you want to draw shapes that appear that they come around. And it comes down, doesn't reveal anything. Cuts across the chest, comes back up, and goes back around her arm. And what I mean is, you make lines so you, it looks like the shirt will continue around her whatever shape it is, you don't want to stop to set the line of her skin because it looks like the shirt just stops and it goes off that way instead of going around like it's part of her skin. And this is just a sleeve follows the contour for her body her chest, so her side, comes around, has little folds in it, and it comes down, following the contour of her body. And she's wearing a glove. So we're just drawing the glove. Once again, drawing lines so that makes it appear that it's coming around. It's actually on her hand. Now, I would never finish a drawing like this. Make it the line so thick and hard, but for instructional purposes, 
for the camera can see my pencil lines. That's why I'm doing it. Straight lines for her arms, some contour lines. And you could just draw the shape around her hands since it's a glove. Individual bones are there in the hand. The glove, I'm sorry. There's this flappy thing. It's not that the fingers are cut out, it's just, just there. shirt kind of muffles at the bottom, kind of all overlaps her hips a little bit before her skirt comes into play. So I'll just make her, just make it here, tight sweater, but you still want it to overlap a little bit at least. And for her, you can We'll just follow the contour of her body. And I wouldn't fill in this part too much since the contours of that line of her chest is here. What I would do is I would add her little symbol, which would be a really pain in the butt to animate. But she's wearing the broken hearted symbol the barbed wire around it that I've created. And it's a little bit big so you can actually read it. Read it, I mean see it on the drawing and on the screen because it gets a little messy with all the barbed wire in there. And that would usually cover up her breasts, but since she's standing against the shirt, Flops down a little bit too low. So now, I just finished off her other arm. Her other arm, this is where her t shirt is, it wraps around. And she's not wearing a glove or anything here. But you just follow the contour of the shape of her hand. And usually I would do all this stuff when I'm inking. I would never finalize a drawing usually like this. It's not finalizing, it's just making lines darker, basically. And since she's wearing a skirt, get loose again. Put a little skirt on. And make some contour lines. It's rising up a little bit. That wraps around. And she's wearing these weird long socks. So once that sock, sorry, starts all up here, maybe it might be a little tight, a little form fitting. It's like it's a little loose if it's drawn like that. A little form fitting. Socks are kind of mechanically way for a wrap around because they're so close to your skin, I guess. And the other one is falling down, so this one will appear to be wrapping around. I'm going to be able to look to be as if we're looking into your sock because it's falling down. The 
four fold. Let's zoom double on. So it appears that we can look to the sock and see her leg. It's falling down. Kind of like a boot almost. Her skirt. Yeah, so much should be wrapping around. So her eyes are looking here, and this is where the horizon line will be. So, I think I'll just erase this part, the overlapping of her skirt. And I'll put the direction of the skirt wrapping around the top. That's it. That's as much I can actually fit on this piece of 12 field paper. So what I would do next is put another sheet of paper on top of this. And I would basically take a thick pen and just outline her. Which would be my inking. Cover up her eye. So when I go and scan this into a computer, I'll have nice solid black lines. Uh, the sketching. And that's it. For now, it's Jenna. Come back and watch me uh, take a pen to this.